821. True honor to have this author on the couch here with us. 8010, a great history you have with the uh, works you have published and a brand new one, The Valley of Amazement, now out. And uh, there's the cover of the book, and many people say a picture is truly worth a thousand words. And uh, the picture of your grandmother inspired this one, yeah? Yeah. Uh, it was a picture of my grandmother, but also a picture I found in a book with 10 women, and they were called the, the 10 Beauties of Shanghai, and they were courtesans. And they were wearing exactly the same clothes as my grandmother. It was very distinctive. This headband that was very elaborate. That the high there. collar, the shorter sleeves, and matching bracelets taken in a photo studio with that backdrop. Yeah. And I found out they were all the, you know, hallmarks of a courtesan. And that started this mystery of doing a lot of research that took me into this world of flowers. Um, women who were like geishas at one time, who were courted and uh, who entertained men. I, I, I still don't know whether she really was a courtesan, but it was that mystery of the photo that led me into that world. And I abandoned the novel I'd been working on for five years, mm -hmm. and I started a new one, The Valley of Amazement. And with this book, when you have a book that covers themes like money, power, and sex, the idea of sexuality is so personal, especially with the cultural <laughs> divide that exists. Yeah. How do you approach that as an author when it comes to praise? and criticism of, you know, the story you're telling. Well, I was very sensitive from the beginning about the, the whole notion of writing about courtesans. You know, it seems like such a stereotype, Sin City, Shanghai, and all that. But I had to write about this particular world because of the possibility my grandmother lived in it. Now, all my books really are based on what is meaningful to me. It's the only way I can write honestly. But I also looked at the sex in, in the way that it was... Um, genuinely used as currency and there's a big distinction between currency and intimacy which also got confused among these courtesans who were teenagers essentially and if they fell in love it was basically a bad business move mm -hmm. um, so the sex had to be part of it which made it rather nerve-wracking for me because I was known as somebody who couldn't write a sex scene. You know, I always had this feeling people thought everything I wrote was autobiographical. Yeah. So I was, no, let's not go there. See, that's such an interesting point because as you talk about the idea of writing honestly, as an artist, where do you draw the line of how vulnerable you choose to be about these personal stories about real life? You know, I always feel that I'm holding back some things that I want to keep private, but I have so many people say to me, you're so brave to reveal this much, and I would never be able to say that. And then I think, what did I reveal? I do think I'm writing personally about self-identity and all the questions that go into how we become who we are, especially, you know, through tragedies or crises in our lives. And so that happens in the book, certainly. That was part of Joy Luck Club and every single book that I've written. But in this one, it's the crises of two women and big changes going on in their lives and as well as in Shanghai during this period, which is early 20th century. And as you write these stories, last night you're in Vancouver. You have the chance to meet your fans, connect with people. They really appreciate your work. Yeah. What would you say is like some of the most rewarding feedback that you do get from people that, that follow you and say, I connect with this, Amy? You know, when I have people say, my relationship with my mother is, is changed and we have gotten to know each other. Or I get some really touching ones that make me practically cry. That was a book that a woman and her mother read together before her mother died or something like mm. that. Or that a daughter can communicate better or a mother is just so happy she has something to share. Or a, a, a guy will say, I took an interest in Chinese people and I, I'm now studying in China. I used to have no interest at all in, in what they had to say. You know, things like that that are life changing. I don't take credit for it. I'm just glad that the book was a conduit. Um, you know, these are things that people get out of books and s themselves. And, uh, you know, I think that's why literature is important. People identify. Well, you're definitely a catalyst on many levels, and I got to point this out because Vancouver is a personal touch for you. Yeah. Uh, you had your honeymoon? <laughs> I had not only my honeymoon, I fell in love here in Vancouver with my husband 44 years ago. 44 years ago? 44 years, years ago in a sleazy hotel. What was <laughs> a the sleazy hotel? sleazy hotel. I don't remember the name. It was like we were driving and say, well, that looks good. <laughs> and then in, in 40 years ago when we were married and we honeymooned and we stayed at 
again, like the first hotel we saw, which was the Dufferin. The Dufferin. I think the, that's now the Moda Hotel down on yeah, Seymour. Yeah, the, the, it's a classy hotel, I think, now. But back then, it was. Um, it became over the years a pay-by-the-hour kind of place for random oh, encounters. Oh, real and, sexy. Yeah, yeah. Kind of pay for the videos and, you know, the room <laughs> for, for an hour or so. But that's where we had our honeymoon. Oh, my. We've stayed in very nice places since then. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, 44 years of marriage, what's the secret to keeping uh, love and romance alive? Uh, separate closets, separate bathrooms. Separate bathrooms, right there, girl. <laughs> All right. I, I asked Michael Kane that question on this show. He said, hey, what can you do? Separate bathrooms. Uh, listen, thanks for sharing the insights. Uh, if you want to pick up the brand new book, there it is, The Valley of Amazement. Amy, an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, going to take a break here on the show, managing those digital devices. It's a hot topic of discussion. And next.